Hi, I'm Alistair. I make Playful Electronics. And at the moment, I'm working on several projects that use arcade push buttons like these. And because they're such common inputs that you find in arcade games and interactive museum exhibits and escape room props, I thought I'd make a short video about them. Now, they're not super complicated, but there are a few gotchas to be aware of. So come with me on a deep dive to find out more about how they work. So here I've disassembled and laid out a handful of different styles of buttons. And let's begin by identifying the components. So up at the top here, I've got the main body of the button itself. You can see that they come in different shapes and colors and styles. This one here is a solid sealed unit, whereas most of the others have a transparent top to the button. And the reason for that is that they're designed to have a custom piece of text or graphic inserted onto the button front. Now to change that graphic, what you need to do is if you squeeze these legs in at the base, that will allow you to pull out the front cover of the button like this. And then if I just take this plastic front off, you can see you can change this plastic insert here, or you can just add a bit of card or paper on the front, replace that back in there, and then push that back in the button. So you can very easily change these to have sort of any custom text or something if you want. Now the housing, as you saw, had a spring inside it so that when you press down on the button and release it, it returns back to where it started. So this is what we call a momentary input. All arcade buttons are momentary inputs. They don't remain pressed in. And there's no electronics in these parts at all. These are just plastic and springs. So to install one of these switches, what you need to do is drill a hole of the appropriate diameter to match the shaft. Now, these can range in diameter from uh, about 24 millimeters up to about 32 millimeters. So you will need to measure the particular button you're installing because there isn't necessarily a standard diameter. And then what you do is you simply uh, push the button through the hole from the top and then tighten a fixing ring, being careful not to cross thread it, from the base onto the threaded shaft to hold it in place. And that is your button installed. Now, from the underside, we then need to attach the electronics to actually make the button do something. So, this is the switch itself. It's called a micro switch, and it has a small bump actuator on the top here that you click in. There's a 4.8 millimeter terminal on the bottom and a normally open terminal on the side. So when the button is not pressed, there is no connection here. When the button is pressed down, the switch closes that circuit and current can flow between these terminals. Now, fortunately, micro switches are pretty standardized. I've got a bunch here from different manufacturers. They're all exactly the same dimensions and you can use them interchangeably. The only thing to note is that this switch has got two output terminals on the side. So it's got a normally open and also a normally closed. So just as before, when the button is pressed, it connects the common terminal at the bottom to the normally open terminal. But in this switch, when the button is not pressed, it also forms a secondary circuit between the common terminal and the normally closed terminal. Now, for detecting whether a button is pressed or not, you don't need that second terminal. It's generally only useful if you're using one of these switches in a more advanced circuit. So the majority of arcade buttons come supplied with switches that only have a normally open terminal, and that's fine. So we need to install the switch at the base of the button housing, so that when the button is pressed down, these little wings at the bottom here press down on the bump actuator and engage the switch. Now for some buttons that's pretty straightforward. We simply clip the switch in to these little nodes here like that. It engages in position and then all we need to do is we take some wires, connect them to the normally open and the common terminal and then we can wire this to the GPIO inputs of our Arduino or whatever other controller we're using, and that's it. Now, for some other buttons, however, it's a little bit more complicated because these are illuminated buttons. 
So rather than the solid opaque button here, these buttons are translucent and allow a light to shine through from underneath. And that means we need an extra component, which is a bulb holder like these. Now, illuminated buttons were used in arcade and fruit machines from the sort of 1970s and 80s. So would have originally housed incandescent wedge light bulbs like this one, which you simply push into the holder. Having done that, there are these terminals on either side and you apply 12 volts across those terminals like this will cause the light bulb to light up. You then install that light underneath your uh, button and hopefully you can see that that is now glowing through. Nowadays, instead of incandescent bulbs, we typically use LEDs instead, which last longer and are more energy efficient. So we can take an LED and solder a resistor onto one of the legs, and then we need to connect it between these metal clips in the bulb holder. And to do that, we can insert it into some plastic housing like this. So there's two holes in the base and if we simply push the legs of the LED and the resistor through and then we can wrap those legs around these little wings at the base. Now if you buy an illuminated arcade button it will probably already come supplied with an LED like this and if so you can simply use it as a drop-in replacement for where the bulb would be. Now one thing to be aware of though is that unlike uh, incandescent filament light bulbs, LEDs are polarity dependent. So if you push it in the wrong way around, nothing's going to happen. You do need to plug it in so that the anode of the LED is connected to the positive power source and the cathode to the negative. And these are typically supplied designed to run from a 12 volt DC source, which is what most arcade machines run at. But suppose you wanted to light up your buttons using a 5 volt power supply instead. Well, that's fine. You just need to adjust the resistor value accordingly. And you can calculate the resistor you need using Ohm's law according to this formula, which is exactly the same as you'd use to calculate the current limiting resistor you'd need in any series circuit. Now you could even replace the regular LED with an RGB or a programmable LED instead, and I've made a previous project explaining how to do that. Now, there's just one more detail to be aware of, and this is the bit I find the most annoying about these buttons, which is that there is no standardization at all in the design of these bulb holders. You'll see that I've got several different styles here, and although they're really similar, they're not interchangeable. You need to use the one that matches the button you're using. If I hold them up a little bit closer to the camera, hopefully you'll be able to see. So this white bulb holder here has got uh, little circular nodules on the side and those need to mate with holes in the side of the button here. So this bulb holder and this button style go together and you'll see that they engage nicely and having done that I can now insert my micro switch into the base. But it is worth noting that even if you don't want to install an LED in this button you still need to install the bulb holder because that's the way that you attach the micro switch into the button. Uh, these two here are really, really similar. They have a different uh, method of attaching. Rather than a, a single nodule sitting out, you'll see they have kind of a, a groove. But this one has a much higher profile around the outside than this one, and that means that it doesn't fit in the same buttons. It's got this thick section at the bottom that prevents you pushing it in. And this one has a different style again. This has got a slightly offset button on the side. So this is really frustrating. Just a few weeks ago, I bought a set of these large 100 millimeter diameter colored buttons. Uh, they were purchased together from the same seller at the same time. But if I show you the reverse of them, hopefully you'll be able to see this. They've actually got different styles on the back of the button here and that's because they come with different holders. Um, I'm now even trying to remember which one goes with which. So I think the green button here, uh, yeah the green button goes with this style holder here with a little nodule on it whereas the red one 
I think you can see it has a different style goes with that one and they are not interchangeable I can't use them the other way around so that's just uh, irritating and it's worth noting when you buy buttons do keep them with the bulb holders that come with them because otherwise you'll get a lot of frustration later on as I myself have suffered uh, when you come to rummage through your box and you find a load of buttons and a load of bulb holders that don't fit them